How do you find deals, right? How do you find the good deals, right? I'm talking about the meaty deals, man. I'm talking about the double quarter pounder with cheese kind of deals, folks. Not them salad deals, right? I'm talking about the best deals, right? All real estate deals can essentially be put into two two categories. On-market deals, right? What you get from your friendly local neighborhood real estate agent or off-market deals, right? And anybody who's anybody who's been doing any type of research into real estate investing, into flipping houses, into wholesaling, you've probably heard or come across people saying the off-market deals are the ones you really want. Them's the meaty ones, man. Them's the meat and taters, right? Those are the big deals, right? And as a, a broker and investor myself, right, people ask me, they're like, hey, man, do you ever work with off-market deals? Dog. I'm a broker. How do you think deals get put on the market? I put them there. That's what brokers do, right? Uh, and there's very, uh, there, there's varying ways you can find off-market deals, folks. There is a million and one types of ways to find off-market deals. But today, today we're going to focus on my five favorite ways to find off-market deals. These five ways to find off-market deals have helped me make millions of dollars in this industry, folks. I've sold $200 million worth of real estate, and these are the five best ways I have found to find off-market deals, whether I bought them myself as an investor or put them on the market as a broker. These are the five true ways, tried and true, folks. This puts the most money in your pocket. Let's go through them. Welcome to the Ask James Wise Show, folks. My name is Billy. I'm just kidding. It's James Wise. It'd be really weird if it was Billy, though, right? Like, Who's James Wise? That don't make no sense. <laughs> no. I am James Wise, and I will be your host. I am here to help you guys invest in real estate, right? I said this earlier. I'm going to say it again. I've sold $200 million worth of real estate, okay? I tell you that. Maybe is it a low-key or not-so-low-key brag? I don't know. Maybe. But... What I think is important when you're listening to any type of guru or this or that, I think you need to understand where they're coming from, right? You get a lot of these gurus out there that uh, their only business is the business of teaching you stuff, right? If you, like, dig deeper, have they ever actually, like, walked the walk or are they just talking the talk, right? So I felt like that was important information for you to know, number one. Number two, uh, we're going to be going over. As I said, my five best, most favorite, most effective, efficient ways of finding off-market deals. And I'm going to be utilizing visual illustrations here to help you understand. And it's also going to be stuff that I've done at my own company, right, that has helped me actually sell $200 million worth of real estate. Not to mention my company uh, runs the largest scattered site portfolio of its kind in our market, right? So right now we're managing roughly $75, uh, $75 million worth of real estate, right, our rental portfolio, right? So whether you're a house flipper, a buy and hold investor, a wholesaler, or even a real estate agent out there trying to figure out how you can get off-market deals, meet sellers, things of that nature. This is how, man. This is the five best ways, right? Number five. By the way, I did this list, uh, like, five being the like my least favorite of the five. Like, all five of these are pretty dope, right? But number one is, like, the dopest, right? So it goes backwards, just so you're all aware. Number five, vehicles, right? You got to let people know. You buy houses, right? That's the thing, right? We're finding off-market deals. You got to let people know you want off-market properties. You want their property, right? If you got like a deal being pitched to you, whether it's by a real estate agent or a wholesaler, even when the wholesalers are pitching you guys deals and they're like, yo, off-market deal, somebody's pitching it to you. It's, it's not really off-market, right? There's, there's a middleman selling it, right? So in all five of these scenarios, it's going to involve the process of you reaching out, right? You are reaching out to people who have property, letting them know you want their property, whether you want to list it as an agent, buy it as a buy and hold investor, buy it as a house flipper, or wholesale it, right? So number five, the first one, vehicles, okay? Look at that. 
These are, we, I'm not just talking the talk, but we walk the walk, right? This is what we do, right? Look at this box truck. That is a mobile billboard. In addition, these are the leasing vehicles that my team utilizes, right? This is what they drive in. When you see these things on the road, you are not under any misconception as it is of what Holton Wise does, what Holton Wise is about, right? This is a moving billboard letting the world know, hey, dog, you got houses, we want them, right? We got all of our contact info, social media, and then as big as possible, I buy houses, right? Here's another zoom in of the leasing stuff, right? This is cool, right? Because you get billboards, and billboards will attract... Uh, everybody that drives by it, but these are mobile billboards, right? These are moving. So no matter where you or your employees are, they are always working for you, right? Everybody that works a field job at Holton Wise gets issued a company vehicle. We let them guys take them home with them, right? We don't stow them away in our parking lot. We want them in the driveway of our employees, right? We got 60-something employees here. Not all of them are field employees, so not all of them have cars. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many trucks or vans I have in my fleet, but what I'm saying is, you know, myself, I live in one home, right? I'm the owner of the company. I live in one home, right? I could have one mobile billboard in my driveway, right? How about a mobile billboard in everybody's driveway, right? You got to think like that. In addition, right, having these things, you can get involved in the community, right? Uh, in one of the local cities we operate in, they were doing a Christmas Day parade, right? So we got some employees, their families, the cute little kiddos all having a good time. And guess what? Marketing, community involvement. That's the type of stuff you want to do. There's another shot of us at some parades. We got a couple trucks in this parade. Uh, it's hard to tell here, but that's your boy Jay Wise right there. And that, that yellow thing you see there, that's a T-shirt cannon, y'all. I was shooting T-shirt cannons into the crowd, okay? That's going to come in later too, right? You're going to notice. You want to combine a lot of these things uh, to give the full concept, to give the full impression to people, right? You need multiple touches on people, letting them know you want their deals, right? That's the messaging. I buy houses. You need people to understand what you do, right? You see on here at the parade, you got the kiddos, but you also see a couple Holton Wise employees wearing logoed shirts. Again, more on that later, right? Another truck. Another truck, and uh, this is a good one. I love this one. I think there's a lot of people out there that watch videos like this, and they're like, okay, great, bro, cool. You're some rich dude. You got freaking, like, 50 vehicles, all the, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of vehicles. Great. I'm just getting started in real estate, bro. I don't have $500,000 in 60 employees. Thank you for the horrible advice. I don't want to hear that. No excuses. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Did I start with all that stuff? No, absolutely not. This is where I started, okay? This picture, this was taken in 2013. This is how it started, right? Look at these three vehicles, okay? Just regular, rundown vehicles started off with the magnets. You got to start somewhere, right? This was actually my truck, my personal vehicle, okay? I had actually purchased this vehicle Way back when I was like 19 years old, I was working at a gas station uh, like the year after high school, right? This is this is the vehicle I drove, and I drove this thing till it freaking, like, we rode this thing into the ground. Eventually, like, the bottom cab uh, rusted out. So, like, it started as my personal vehicle. Then as we got employees, like, we issued it to employees, and it became a fleet vehicle. We rode this thing until the landscaping kid that was driving it, until his feet went through the bottom of the cab because the bottom of it rusted out. So don't give me that. I don't have that kind of money. You don't need it, right? This is how it starts, and then it snowballs. You build it from there, right? Same messaging. I buy houses, okay? And then we got another magnet, some property management stuff, right? This is like a $2,000 truck, and we fitted it with, like, I don't know, $100 worth of magnets or something like that. Same deal. Just this little van right here. We bought this thing used. We even got, a, like, a sedan. I don't even remember what kind of car that is, right? But everybody's got to start somewhere, right? So one day, maybe 10 years' time like us, you could have that full fleet of, uh, the full fleet of vehicles, the impressive vehicles. But you got to start somewhere. And don't be afraid to start here because that's where we started, okay? Still gets the messaging across, man. You got to walk before you could run, all right? Now, number four, merch, right? I talked to you guys. Merch. 
I said, hey, some of these are going to be combined. Remember that T-shirt cannon? What do you think the T-shirt cannon uh, had in it? T-shirts, gives messaging, things to say like, hey, I buy houses, things like that. Look at my shirt today. I specifically wore this shirt. It's a little wrinkly, but I was digging in the bottom of my closet. This is an older shirt. I was like, this is the shirt I got to wear for these guys, right? You got the I buy houses, our phone number. Uh, it's bright orange, right? I'm in Home Depot. I'm in Lowe's. I'm walking anywhere, right? People know I buy houses, right? You got the logo on the back. We got the logoed hat, right? Guy right here is my partner, John Holden. What do you think this guy does? He's on, he's on, the, uh, he's on the job site. It's pretty simple. It's pretty obvious, right? This guy buys houses. People know, right? One of our employees... Branded attire, another employee, branded attire, right? Your employees, just like their vehicles are walking billboards. Your employees are walking billboards. What's this? This is one of my guys at an eviction. What's he doing? He's wearing branded attire. What's it say right there? I buy houses, right? People see evictions, tired landlords. They'll look at that like, oh, I hate, I hate evictions. Oh, look at those guys doing evictions. What do you know? They buy houses. Maybe they'll buy my house, right? Okay, another employee, branded attire, right? It's all about... Letting people know who you are, what you do, right? Merchandise. And guess what, folks? We got merchandise for you, too, right? After this video, if you want, you can click the notes below. You can pick up some of our swag, right? Wear this bad boy into Home Depot, man. Wear it into Home Depot when you're, you're working, right? You're working while you're working. You're letting things make money for you passively. You don't even need your phone number on the stuff, right? You just need the messaging out there that says, I buy houses, right? And then you let the people come to you. Ladies, we got this one for you, too. Look at that thing. I buy houses cash, right? You just need people to know, and you want to have that stuff happen silently, right? So you're just going about your day, and your T-shirt's making you money, right? Because what you can't do, I mean, I guess you could do it. It wouldn't be very efficient. This would technically be... A way, uh, what I'm about to explain, would be a way that you can find off-market deals, sure, but it's not going to make my top five because it's inefficient, right? You can go everywhere you go and make sure every human being you see, you go, hey, what's up? My name's Billy Bob. I buy houses. Hey, what's up? My name's Billy Bob. I buy houses and hand him a card, right? Hey, I'm Billy Bob. I buy houses. You could do that, uh, but your day is going to be very long and you're going to annoy a lot of people, right? Instead, just put a billboard on yourself, let them know, and I guarantee you, if you're standing there, and somebody sees you in a brightly colored I buy houses shirt and they got a house they're trying to get rid of, they're a motivated seller, they will come up to you, right? Let your marketing, let these things work for you, right? And then, you know, we got this one too, right? Get a little shock value, right? Get stuff that people remember you, right? This one. <laughs> people know you're a landlord when you wear this one. Ho, 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 you got to go, said eviction clause, right? <laughs> you wear that bad boy. People know you're a landlord. People know landlords buy houses. This one, it's a big seller uh, around Christmas time, y'all. Don't be afraid to get the messaging out. People need to remember you. If you want to be known as the guy or the gal that buys houses, the guy or the gal that wants distressed properties, the guy or the gal that wants to do deals, people got to remember you, right? Ain't nobody forgetting the guy or the girl wearing that uh, eviction clause shirt. Next, number three. Yard signs, okay? I say yard signs because I want you putting signs in your properties, right? Uh, in your own yards, right? Here's one of our rentals. You got the for rent sign, another big sign right there. It says, I buy houses. What I don't like to see is those signs you see on the side of the highway, stuck to telephone poles that just say, I buy houses. First, they're called bandit signs. They're called bandit signs because they're illegal, right? Bandit, illegal, you get it. Uh, number one. Number two. Uh, outside of being illegal, just looks trashy, shows your low key, shows you have no respect uh, for the community and, and the local ordinances, right? And additionally, it ju it's just like shady, right? Everybody knows the shady guys that are just hammering the signs like illegally and sticking them on a side of uh, si uh, sidewalks, sticking them on a side of highways, things like that. Everybody knows those people don't got no money, right? People, Those people give the industry a bad name, right? You want to set yourself up as the expert, the legitimate person, the legitimate business. And you do that by putting the sign in front of a house you bought. Nothing says I buy houses like buying a house, right? But nobody would know you bought the house unless you put the sign there, right? And from there, like I said, you want to combine these things, right? People need to see you multiple times, need to understand you are looking for properties multiple times. You get the messaging out. 
they will contact you. So multiple touches, right? This one, one of our rentals, we got the yard sign, and we got the vehicle, right? Number five was vehicles. Number three is yard signs. What about this one? Number four, what was number four? It was the merchandise, right? So we combined them. We got number five, four, three, right? Multiple times, right? Our property with a yard sign, with a vehicle, with an employee wearing the shirt, all right? That's what you want. And then as you get bigger, you get bigger signs, right? This is a big old apartment building, 24-unit apartment building, right? See that big old sign right there for leasing info, right? Use all the things you need to do as the opportunity to let people know who you are, right? We have it fully branded. You don't just want to write for leasing and then a number. They need to know who you are, right? Because people driving by are going to be like, man, I really hate my tenants. I really want to sell my apartment building. Oh, Holton Wise, I see them everywhere. I see their trucks. I see their signs. All their employees' shirts say I buy houses. They're doing this. They're doing that. Those guys have all the houses. I bet they would want to buy my apartment building. I'm going to see what they have to offer. You get what I'm saying? Multiple touches, right? This is our building, right? You don't want an unbranded building. Make sure people see who you are, what you do, right? Building signs, folks. This right here, get creative, right? Work with some art, okay? Little known fact, every city in the United States has some type of advertising restriction on buildings, okay? You can't just run around like the bandit sign people and do stuff willy-nilly. You got to follow the law or else the city's going to hammer you, right? But you can get creative to get what you want, to get things bigger, better, more awesome, right? So every city in the USA, they have restrictions on the size of the advertising you could do on your buildings, right? People not in the know may not have understood that. You might think, oh, it's my building. I could put a sign on it as big as I want. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, certain cities are going to have different requirements. Check your local building codes for yours. But, like, you get to have X amount of percentage of the frontage of the building being an advertisement, right? You can't go larger than that, okay? So you got to get creative. So what we did here, this sign is probably 20 times larger than the city would allow us to have, okay? So what we did is we worked with the city and we said, hey, Tell you what, we're going to do an art installation on this particular building, right? So this is a very large building. This is a, it's like a nine-unit building. It's a mixed-use building. I got three retail and six apartments, right? And if I wanted to do an advertisement, like if I just wanted to put a billboard, because this is on a, like when people are driving south, this is what they see. The parking lot next to it is a pop, uh, popular beverage store. So people see this. Uh, way down the street, right? This has so much exposure, right? But the regulations, if I just wanted to put a sign, it would be a teeny-weeny sign, right? You see this window? It would be like a little bit bigger than this window. And then this whole big, beautiful wall, we couldn't utilize it, right? So I talked to the city, and I worked on getting a zoning variance because I gave the city something they wanted. The city wanted an art installation. They wanted something to beautify the city. They wanted to provide an attraction for the city. Took me about a year and a half to go through city meetings with the mayor and the council members. But eventually we worked together and we both got what we want, right? I was able to advertise my business and get something that draws the attention of all the people in the community that is 10 to 20 times bigger than it otherwise could have been. Plus... This is the largest mural in the city. It's like dedicated to what this particular city, Parma, Ohio, has going on. It draws people's attention, right? I've actually seen it. Uh, kids, when they graduate Parma High School, I've seen a couple kids actually take their senior photos in front of my mural, right? Because it's dedicated to the city, right? So there's kids out there. They're going to be looking in their yearbooks 10, 15, 20 years from now, or, you know, mom and grandma got all the you know, the senior pictures and whatnot. And guess what? Their senior pictures are advertising the fact that Holton Wise buys your houses, right? Think outside of the box, people. Go big, right? Another one. Number two, my second most favorite, social media, right? There's a lot of social media out there, but social media is a great way to get your message out there, right? You're watching me here on Holton Wise TV. As I speak to you today, uh, We've got 12 million 600 and something thousand views, about 12 million 604,000 views, 62,500 subscribers, right? 
Twelve and a half million people have listened to me give my message, have talked, uh, have listened to me talk about my messaging, what my company does, right? So of those 12 and a half million, a lot of those are people wanting to sell houses, right? So use social media, right? Now, YouTube is my favorite, but you can utilize other uh, platforms, all right? YouTube is uh, not the only platform, but I do like YouTube. Uh, this is another one. This is just me doing my show, selling properties, helping people buy properties. That's what we do. Uh, show people what you do, right? Again, you could use other other platforms, right? You could be using Facebook, Facebook groups. Groups are really nice. You know, get in investing groups or those like buy, sell, lease groups. Hey, everybody, uh, this is a buy, sell, lease group. I wonder if y'all are trying to sell your house. If so, I'm the guy that wants to buy them, right? But what I really find is documenting what you do your life as an investor, people will be attracted to that, right? Like this is a live eviction. This is one of the most popular videos we've ever put out on Holton Wise TV. It's got 1.3 million views on its own, right? And what do you know? I combine things, right? This is me. I'm in the car I'm talking to my business partner, John Holton. What does his shirt say, right? It says, I buy houses, okay? So anybody seeing this knows we're in the business of buying houses, right? People want to see that stuff. You got to entertain people a little bit, right? You don't want to be cookie cutter. You don't want to be boring, right? So sometimes your fat ass has to take your shirt off, paint yourself blue, and run around like a genie, man. People don't forget fat blue genies, though. You know what I'm saying? There might be 10 guys out there buying houses, but how many guys are buying houses that are fat and blue like a genie? This is a commercial we had. That's America Girl. That's Steve, right? Give a little humor, right? Give people something to remember you by. Lots of people out there are giving out the I buy houses message. You want to be the one that they remember. And if that involves you wearing a Real Estate 316 shirt, standing on top of your low gold vehicle, crushing two beers, Stone Cold Steve Austin style, that's what you got to do, right? Because people ain't going to forget the Stone Cold Steve Austin beer chug buys houses and then finally the last one direct mail the classic snail mail actual letters in the mail right believe it or not this one old school classic nothing makes a higher roi than snail mail right it's all about getting your letters out there, getting a higher open rate. So like what we have here, this is one of the actual letters we use. This is a black letter. Very infrequently do you ever receive a black letter in the mail. But if you don't have that kind of money, you can get white letters, uh, which are going to be cheaper. We utilize those as well. Costs a lot less per letter than the black one, but your open rate is going to be lower. So you got to kind of give take on that one, right? See how much you want to invest, see where you're at. But, you know, everybody has to start somewhere, just like the old crummy truck, right, with the magnet before we got the big, beautiful billboard trucks, right? You got to start somewhere. So you'll probably start with the white letters, and you want to send those out, right? It's all about getting your letters in as many people's hands as humanly possible, right? And then after that, you could then upgrade to, like, you know, brighter colors, colors that stand out, and try to get a higher open ratio. But at the beginning, it's about getting your letters into the right hands. And you might be like, okay, that's cool. Who do I mail these letters to? I'm glad you asked that. You want to mail them to people that are likely to be motivated sellers. You see the previous four, right? Those are you just going out and having your messaging out there 24-7, 365 at all times to anybody who drives past your truck, drives past your sign, sees your employee in a store or a restaurant, uh, scrolling on their Facebook, going through YouTube, Googling stuff about real estate, and then they're popping along uh, your content, right? That is going out to the masses. This direct mail has a higher close ratio of actually getting you off market deals than the others because it is directed marketing it is specifically sent to people and it works the best when you get it to the right people number one number two when that person who opens it it's not like completely out of the blue it's just like oh holton wise i remember them i see their shirts i see their trucks i see their signs i see them all over YouTube, right? And then they get the letter, and that's where you're trying to close them. And that is usually what generates the phone calls. The thing is, you got to know who to get the letters to. You're going to go broke 
if you just try to send the letters to everybody in the world, you can't do that, right? You have to have a budget like Coca-Cola <laughs> to be able to market to everybody. So what you need to do is market to specific people, your motivated sellers. You want to be looking for uh, distressed landlords, right? Tired landlords, divorces, things of that nature. You want to find out who owns the kind of properties that you're trying to buy. And then you want to compile a list of all of them and get them a letter, get them an envelope with a letter explaining who you are. Perhaps they've seen your signs, your trucks, your this, your that, and that you want to buy their house. And if you want to know where to get those lists, right, if you're looking for a list of motivated sellers of duplexes in Boise, Idaho, I can provide that list for you. All you need to do is click below this video, right? You see this banner right here, PropStream, okay? That is how you're going to gather up all of this data. You just punch in what you want. They will generate the list for you, and they could actually help you do the direct mail, right? You could actually, like, have them do it all. And guess what, folks? Since I'm a nice guy, since you've been watching the show, you made it this far, you click the link below to PropStream, you're going to go ahead and get a free trial to utilize their services to build your list to get that data so you can put the letters in the motivated seller's hands. And after your free trial expires, since you're a Holton Wise TV subscriber, you go ahead and you sign up to utilize the services on an ongoing basis. You will get a lifetime discount because you went through the link here on Holton Wise TV. That, folks is, in my opinion, the best way to meet motivated sellers to find off-market deals, all five of these things. Direct mail being the most effective at actually generating leads, but the other four are the build-up to that one. You've sent somebody a cold letter, they've never heard of you, never seen you, never... You're nobody. You're a stranger to them. You're going to get less closes, less deals, than if when they open that letter, they're like, oh... Yeah, I got a rental down on Main Street, and I always see the Holton Wise guys cutting grass down in that neighborhood, evicting people. Yeah, they're in the business. These guys are serious. They're not like those schmucks just putting signs on the side of highways illegally. No, these guys actually have a bunch of houses. I'm going to call them, right? That's how you do it, folks. These are the five most effective ways to find off-market deals. As many people out there know, there are hundreds of other ways to find off-market deals, but these are my top five favorites. In the comments, let me know what your favorites are. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.